Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to our clinical trials conference, uh, Disruption and Innovation in Cancer Care where patients take center stage. And those of you who saw it yesterday, our patients in between sessions, in particular at Gordy Levine, really understood the impact of clinical trials on his uh, care pathway and his encouragement for other patients to participate in clinical trials and what a difference it's made in his case, for sure. We also heard from uh, a patient advocate, uh, a super a patient advocate, in uh, Europe, Jan Geisler, who really mirrors a lot of the work that we do at patient-centered approach to clinical trials at PACT and at Colorectal Cancer Canada as well, and developing a, a model and teachings along the way to encourage patients and patient uh, group participation in clinical trials from the ideation and all the way through the clinical trial continuum and even after that. And many of his uh, teachings uh, in Europe and through UPATI are similar to some of the work that we're doing through PACT and what we want to accomplish. So a really good model for all of us to follow as well. We heard from also some of our um, basic researchers yesterday who talked about um, some of the developments in CAR-T and mRNA uh, vaccines and so forth, and really the need to um, get additional funding for basic research in Canada so we can encourage more clinical trials for our patients. And as, uh, as we heard at the, at the end of the day, uh, from Ines, um, you know, this is a, a very important way that patients get access to some of these new trials, new uh, treatments through clinical trials and through basic research and research going on in this, in this country. We also had some fantastic representation, both from Ottawa and from New York at Memorial Sloan Kettering and Ottawa Hospital, talking about new ways of doing clinical trials with neoadjuvant treatment uh, and really addressing uh, some of the new therapies that are out there um, that uh, can make a huge difference uh, in patients' life. And in fact, in one in the case of the Memorial Sloan Kettering trial, complete response of patients by using immunotherapy in early stage cancer, uh, in terms of rectal cancer for uh, microsatellite instability high patients. Uh, so really focusing, of course, on the need to do molecular profiling in Canada, but how these new trials can make a difference um, to all of us and not following the same uh, methodology as in the past necessarily, finding new innovations and ways to do things. And we heard from both industry um, and academia, we heard from industry that we can make um, uh, a whole lot of new advances in terms of precision medicines. We heard from Sunny Kali at Roche and so forth, how this would really, how we can really advance uh, uh, cancer care in Canada by accessing these new precision medicines. Uh, in addition to, um, to um, really looking at the academic um, 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 innovations in terms of uh, in terms of new types of treatments being developed in Canada and the need to to sustain um, uh, these developments in Canada and build upon them not just to start them and see them go uh, elsewhere we also had really uh, fantastic discussions in terms of health technology assessment and what from a physician's point of view heard sandy sadev talk about this and alexander chambers and from an industry perspective on the need to really redo or innovate in the way that uh, cancer drugs uh, are approved in canada to speed up the process to ensure that uh, patients get access to these drugs uh, in an accelerated fashion, subject to the collection of real-world data, of course, and to have very effective uh, drugs in the hands of patients as soon as possible. And then we saw the other side. How is uh, Kadath and Ines struggling to keep up with these new innovations that seem to be coming at an accelerating pace? And gave us good insights as to where they're going and the need, um, well, first of all, the willingness to accelerate the process, but the need for further transparency and uh, early action uh, from the pharmaceutical companies uh, in that process in order to accelerate where possible um, getting um, uh, health technology assessment approval, even at the same time as a notice of compliance. Um, so it was really an exciting day yesterday, hearing from all these people and following the different models. But that said, today we have 
an even more exciting day coming. We're going to hear from a fantastic keynote speaker today, uh, Craig Lipset, who's going to be talking about um, the next disruption in clinical trials, and it's not coming from Silicon Valley. So I think you're going to love that presentation. We're going to hear from actually clinicaltrials.gov about the new website that they've launched, a better beta website that's out there to assist uh, patients and researchers find uh, trials more quickly. We'll also um, talk about new trial designs. We're going to hear from Amgen and Genentech, not only about the new scientific innovations in terms of trials, but also how to operationalize those types of trials. So uh, that I think you're going to find fascinating. And then we're going to reach into data uh, with Eric Sutherland, who leads the uh, Canadian data strategy, as well as Alan Forster from Ottawa Hospital, their chief of innovation there, and how we can use this data and how we can collect data um, quite uh, easily across the country and use it to uh, create a learning health system whereby uh, we learn from the, uh, the data that we collect in all different ways and adapt accordingly. And uh, almost finally, just before uh, we end on that, we're going to be talking about um, innovation in pathology, digital in innovation, and how we can use artificial intelligence in order to interpret um, uh, uh, different tissue samples and so forth so that we can actually create more equity and people in the regions can actually, um, when they have access to digital uh, pathology, can actually get the type of answers they need to determine what types of precision medicines or clinical trials, for that matter, um, may be available uh, to them. So that's going to be a fascinating way to almost end the day when we're going to conclude with um, uh, 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 the vision that patient-centered approach to clinical trials has and how you can join us in that mission. So really, um, I can't tell you how many exciting things that we're going to learn about today. Yesterday, it seemed that, that there was one thing after the other coming at us uh, uh, in terms of new innovations and great ideas to include the patient. We also will hear again from a patient in between sessions um, because patients do take center stage about how clinical trials have impacted him in Canada uh, uh, as well, in particular at Ottawa Hospital. So um, with that, uh, I hope, uh, first of all, thank you to all of you who are rejoining us and to those who are joining us for the first time today. You'll be able to see yesterday's session um, on our website. Uh, and this site will remain open until the end of the year as well. So you can go into the virtual lobby, into the exhibition hall as well, and have fun uh, doing that and seeing the different videos and so forth. They're really uh, it's a lot of fun. And of course, don't forget to network with the different people who are joining. There's uh, hundreds of people who have registered for this conference, and they uh, are all looking to interact with you. So with that said, I'd like to uh, hand this over to our wonderful facilitator, Anne-Marie Wright, um, who will take it uh, from here and introduce our keynote speaker. Have a wonderful conference, and I look forward to sharing in this experience with you. Anne-Marie? Thanks so much, Barry. Your enthusiasm is, is catching, and I'm excited about today as well. Uh, let me reinforce a couple of key points, just as a reminder on the logistics and how to use the virtual platform here is uh, we told you yesterday that we have had a record audience participation in this sixth annual conference. Our audience is diverse in terms of where they come from, everything from industry through to CROs to regulatory um, experts, they are joining us today. Our audience is also very diverse internationally. And in fact, just prior to uh, the beginning of today's session, we were talking about the number of global speakers that we actually have on the agenda today. No matter what, everyone who joins us, we're very grateful for and very thankful for because everyone who joins us and contributes with us pushes forward the agenda of patient engagement in clinical trials, and it causes the success of this conference and causes the advancement of 
the uh, engagement models that we're going to consistently be learning out about throughout the day. So I want to reinforce a couple of key, key, key points that Barry made as well. Please, please, please do join and click on the exhibit hall. We are grateful and thankful to the many sponsors who contribute and support this conference and we really would like you to learn more about them. Number two is ask questions and please use the chat functions. In the right-hand corner of your screen, there is both the chat function, and this is really to share your commentary, and then there's a question function. So if you really do have a question, and all of our sessions today are going to have a question period associated with them, so please do ask those questions. We They get prioritized, and I see them as they come in. Um, if you need help in any way, when you enter the virtual lobby of this conference, there's a help desk. We have a magnificent team that sits behind us and you'll be connected to that magnificent team who can help with any kind of technology uh, issues that you may be having. The last point I do wanna make is that all of these sessions are indeed taped um, and will be made available to conference participants um, and guests uh, over the next couple of days. Colorectal Cancer Canada will be issuing communication in that regard, and you can expect to receive um, communication in terms of how and where you can receive any of the sessions that have been uh, uh, run at this conference.